Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and... Well, we're getting into our Christmas games. Yes, we are. And what are we starting off with, Jim? Well, Brian, we are looking at one of the most controversial titles, and that's saying a lot, in all of Sonic, with Sonic Spinball. Brian, I love pinball games. I know you do, Jim. Brian, I kind of like Sonic. I know you do, Jim. Well, let's take a look. Released in 1993, this was developed in just two months by Sega Tactical Institute. It's an American offshoot of Sega. It was published by Sega, and it also came out on the Game Gear and the Master System. This is one of the few titles that are based on the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon series. The goofy one, not the more serious one that introduced people to furries. It's an interesting concept, Sonic's trapped on a volcano, Robotnik has a series of pinball defense systems that Sonic has to defeat in order to get all the chaos and blah 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 blah, typical Sonic shit. Only thing not typical is the gameplay. Let's just get into it. The graphics. As Jim already stated, this game was developed by a separate team than the ones that did the original franchise. So it does have all the same characteristics of a Sonic game. It just seems to be missing something slightly. Even Sonic himself just has a little bit of a different look to him. Still, if I'm being fair, the game does look pretty good. My biggest knock against this is that there's only four levels and within the levels themselves, there's not exactly a ton of variety. Sure, you do have some specific rooms that may look a little bit different, but they all are part of a similar theme. Between the sewer, the volcano, the machine, and the final showdown, like I said, there's not a ton of variety here. But what we do get, it looks pretty colorful, and to be honest, you're going to be spinning around so fast you're not going to notice too much of the background. But I will say, like some Sonic games of the past, this game suffers from some serious slowdown in areas where there is just too much going on. But other than that, you do have these bonus stages which have this kind of odd isometric view that it's not the best well done, but at least they tried something interesting here. And then you have, of course, the final boss fights, which all look okay. They don't knock your socks off, but they don't look terrible either. When it comes to scores, we both gave it 7s. This is definitely above average, but it's not at the caliber of the mainline Sonic games. So when it comes to beer, I'm going to add 2. These both go to Jim, because god damn him for picking this game. The sound. Yeah, boy. Alright, this is a little bit of a rough one. The biggest problem off the bat is it uses the gems driver, which is kind of the system that gives to Sega its unfortunate reputation for having grainy harsh sound to it. It was used to make life easier for developers, but no one really put the time to use it well. So, you get the very generic explosion sounds. You don't get a lot of sound effects in this game for one. You only get maybe four to five, if that, main ones. Sounds of rockets going off, which can also be the same sound as you blowing up Cocker, or, you know, the rooster robots. Maybe just the rail sounds. Like, it's very limited in sound effects. The music, I like the composition of the music, but the instrumentation, again, because of gems, just makes it sound harsh. There's some good melodies here, but my nostalgia is kicking in because I really, I grew up with these songs, so I do like them, but I admit it is nowhere near the quality of any of the mainline Sonic games. Really, it's kind of flawed. So Brian gave it a five, I gave it a six, and when it comes to beer, I'm going to add two beers for using that damn gem system. The control. It's really hard to knock a game that's a pinball game, but I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So, the first... Damn it! <laughs> so first, let's just go over the actual control scheme itself. When you start the game, you realize, okay, this may be a platformer. And then quickly, you're shot into the first level, and you realize, okay, this is more of a pinball game. As you proceed through the game, you will realize there are small areas where you do have to perform platforming, and that is the number one complaint I have with this game, is that this is some of the worst platforming I've seen for a game franchise where the character being able to run and jump is pretty notorious. This one just fucks it up royally. You can't jump and run at the same time. You have to jump and then move in the air, so that's my first problem with it. But let's just put that aside. The main crux of this game is the pinball. 
A, hit your left flipper, B, hit your right flipper, and then C, hit your both flippers together. It's pretty standard. There's no additional controls for this game. So all you're really gonna do, and I don't know why someone would do something different, is hit the C button the entire time because you don't want to take a chance of really fucking up. So actually using the flippers themselves, there's a little bit of a delay. They feel like they're just a little bit sticky. Now, I'm not as familiar with pinball games like Jim is, but I feel like this flipper should never feel sticky. I feel like you should hit them and they should kind of go. So that was just an issue I had while playing the game. But other than that, I just hated the fact that this game couldn't seem to settle on is it a platformer or is it a pinball game? Because while you're in the air, you can control Sonic just the slightest amount. And sometimes you can focus too much on that, miss your flipper, and you're gonna get a lot of bullshit deaths. I'm sure Jim will get into that more. I just found the control to be usable, but not the best. So I gave it a six, Jim gave it a seven. When it comes to beer, I'm gonna add one because I really wish they would have either gotten rid of the platforming altogether or just had a completely separate section for platforming. The gameplay. So like Brian already said, it's mostly a pinball game with some platforming elements in it. Every level, you get dropped into a new gimmick of a level. You have to do a certain amount of challenges to get a certain set amount of Chaos Emeralds in order to unlock the boss room, beat the boss, go to the next level, rinse and repeat. Kind of like with a real pinball table, you have certain targets all along the table that you have to hit, and that's how you, say, hit levers, or you uncork certain things to drain stuff, or you put little safeties down so you don't fall to your death on the side alleyways. There's a lot of real pinball stuff thrown in here as long as typical bumpers and you have warp pipes and you can even do moldy ball if you get all the rings in a level but I would suggest against that because you need to do all that within one life because every time you die the table completely resets except for the cast emeralds you've already collected. You get an extra ball every 20 million points which isn't that terrible to get but Still, it's not the easiest thing in the world, especially if you're new to the game. As Brian pointed out before, you're going to be dealing with a lot of bullcrap deaths until you fully understand this game. You're going to have to learn when to hit, when not to hit, you know, certain targets that you want to hit by going in the alley, certain ones that you know are just going to be an instant death, certain safeties that could only break after a certain amount of times, or just trying to go down the wrong path. There's so many different paths you can take in these levels. And a lot of them are pretty much just straight useless. So it's, again, especially in the later levels. So really learning the direction and the tables you have to go is a must. This is not a beginner friendly game. There are the platforming elements. And while they're very minor during the course of most of the level, they are a major crux of the boss fights. And that really makes them a pain. The boss fights can have each have a certain gimmick that you have to do in order to beat them. But you know, sometimes you'll have to hit it a certain way and then you're bouncing all over the place and you're hoping you're gonna catch that ledge to try and do it all over again. But for the most part, you're just gonna be keeping, you're just gonna keep screwing up until you just get it right. It almost seems like a battle of attrition at times. Between the levels are bonus stages, which you don't have to beat them to win the game and beating them doesn't do anything special except give you a lot more points. They're pointless. They're kind of pointless, but they're a fun distraction and they're more actual pinball than the stages themselves. Pointless. Kind of. But overall, I do like the gimmick of the game, but they just make it so unuser friendly that unless you're a kid at the time with the time to really learn the game, it's just going to turn a lot of people off, and I completely understand. It has a great, lot of great ideas, but the execution, pretty flawed. So Brian gave it a four, and I gave it a six. And when it comes to beer, I'm just going to add one beer for all those damn targets resetting when you die. Holy crap, is that a killer? The originality. Now you've heard Jim and I say throughout this review that this is a really interesting concept. And to be honest, it's a very original concept. The idea of centering a pinball game around a major franchise was not done very often or at all to our knowledge up until this point. It's kind of a no brainer to take a character that spins in a ball and put him in a pinball video game. And you can kind of see where they would have got this during some of the early, some of the stages in the original Sonic franchise, especially like the Las Vegas stage and to take it one step further not only did they have this unique idea of putting sonic in a pinball game but as i said you can kind of control it which is not done in any other pinball game so we had to give this a lot of points i gave it an eight and jim gave it a nine for all the flaws this game has 
the concept is not one of them. So when it comes to beer, I'm not even going to add any. I appreciate what they tried to do here. All right, the replayability is a tough one with this game. There aren't any different endings to the game. You can go back and try to set high scores for yourself. So there's always that. There's that arcadey pinball style. And this does support one to four players, but it's the kind of thing where you all take turns, which as long as these levels can take, I can't even imagine having to wait between turns with other friends. So I I know I never really did it. I can't imagine anyone else in this day and age doing it. But Jim, you didn't do it because you didn't have friends. Bry, I had... <laughs> The lunch lady wasn't your friend. <laughs> <laughs> but she made me skeddies. <laughs> anyway, so even though there's multiplayer where we normally give it a five, it's not really multiplayer, so we gave it fours. And when it comes to beer, I'll give two beers for the lack of multiplayer and really the lack of a reason to ever come back once you beat it. <laughs> so overall, as you can see, I was very fair with my scoring of this game. Yes, I still don't like it, but there are good parts to it. Yeah, this is one that I tried to be as fair as possible with my scoring with. And this is one of those cases where I like the game way more than I scored it. But a lot of that is purely nostalgia. Like, I grew up with this game. I played the hell out of it with my dad, so I have that connection to it. It's the kind of game that I was young enough that I had the time to put into it to really learn the ins and outs of the game. But... If you're an adult jumping into it, I can see you getting frustrated really quick. Don't play it. I mean, even God damn it, even going back to it now, like I'm surprised by, like, good thing for save states because I would have been screaming at my TV a lot. Which is what happened to me until I decided to use save states. Because I'll be honest, as I said during the review, I think the concept here is really interesting, but it's poorly executed. It can't can decide if it wants to be spinball. If <clears throat> It can't decide if it wants to be pinball. It can't decide if it wants to just be a regular platformer. And it doesn't do either one outrageously well. So when it comes to scores, I gave it a 5. Jim gave it a 6. And when we combined all of our scores together, it rounds out to a 5.9. Honestly, I still think that could be a little high on my end. And definitely too high on Jim's end. Sir, please. I was extremely fair. There's just a lot of bullshit that goes along with this game, as you've heard throughout this review. But, as we know, Jim will always score things a little bit higher. Look, it's got, a, it's got a great gimmick. What can I say? I'd like to see more franchises use it. Jim's a guy for gimmicks. I am. So, until next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers. When it comes to beer pairing, I decided to go with the Maniunk Brewing Company's Shore House Berliner Style Ale. This is a beer made with a ton of raspberries, and it's only 3.7%. It's an odd beer, and this is an odd game, so I wanted to give you guys something that was very light in alcohol, but offered you a weird kind of flavor to go with the flow of this game. You don't want to be too drunk, because this game offers you enough bullshit deaths. So, grab a six-pack, try it out, but remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always, guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time, guys. Cheers.